In medicine, there are only a few examples of a chronic disease being cured. I wrote down on a piece of paper the structure and I looked at it and it was just, that's the solution. For years, the hepatitis C virus vexed researchers. It causes a devastating illness that can lead to cancer, organ failure, and death. There was no good treatment, no vaccine. Then, in 2013, drugs hit the market that, with minimal side effects, cured more than 95% of patients in 12 weeks. The drugs have gotten a lot of attention because of the price tag. But their scientific origin story is notable, too. It takes us from Heidelberg, Germany. So my name is Ralf Bartenschlager. To New York City. I just go by Charlie, you know. These researchers began <laughs> studying the hepatitis C virus soon after it was discovered in 1989. It was known to linger in liver cells, damaging the organ over decades. But the researchers really wanted to be able to study it in the lab. Virologists like to have a system where the virus grows. This virus did not cooperate. It wouldn't grow in lab cells, and the researchers began hunting for reasons why. And they realized that the virus genome they were using was missing a piece. So they added it back. So you do this, nothing happens. Then Charlie thought, maybe the virus strains they were using had mutations that made them weaker. So he identified the most common letter at every spot of the hep C genome and made a kind of genetically average virus. And uh, that was a resounding failure. Years pass, morale is low. There were people thinking to leave the group and move to other labs where things are working. It takes a certain tolerance when, you know, 99% of your experiments don't work to sort of think that the next one will. <laughs> Then Rolf had an idea. What if, instead of trying to recreate the full virus life cycle in the lab, they focused only on the replication of the genetic material? They stripped off the virus's coat and then selected only the cells in which the virus's genetic material was replicating. It worked. And this was really the uppest moment we had over the years. Enter Mike Sophia. With hep C replicating in the lab, chemists could start looking for molecules to kill the virus. We call it in drug discovery drug hunters. You're hunting for that solution. Sophia made a molecule that would throw a wrench into the virus's replication machinery. The problem was that the molecule was too charged to pass into liver cells where it needed to do its job. And the approach we took was to mask that charged nature of that molecule so that once it got into the cell, the mask fell off. Think Trojan horse. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a Trojan horse kind of approach. But how to build this micro decoy? The hunt continued. A couple of my chemists and I were sitting around just talking in general about you know, some of the problems that we were facing. And I wrote down on a piece of paper the structure, and it was just, that's the solution. Now, approaches like this had been tried before and were unsuccessful. There were a lot of skeptics. But Sophia was willing to bet on it. I guess it's in my DNA, right? I love taking risks. After a number of iterations, the drug was taken to a clinical trial in combination with another drug. It was at a conference that this data was presented. And when the slide went up that showed 100% cure rates, the whole audience fell silent. And behind us, there was an individual who was working for another company said, game over. Sophia still holds on to some of the early prototype pills. There's absolutely a sentimental attachment to it. <laughs> Gilead Sciences bought the company Sophia worked for, Pharmacet, and brought the drug to market. Because the drugs are so effective and safe, the conversation has turned to access. The pricing is really just amazing, I have to say. It's still very high, especially in Germany. Gilead has faced controversy and legal inquiries over the drug's price, which the company set at $1,000 per day. At the same time, they've licensed generic versions for a fraction of the cost in some countries with high need. We are now in a position to potentially eradicate hepatitis C. 
it's just a commitment on everyone's part to, to try to, at all levels, to try to make this happen. Roughly 800,000 people have been cured of hepatitis C so far on drugs that use Mike's molecule. Drugs that were made possible by the dogged persistence of Rolf and Charlie. But I guess it means that it, it leaves the sort of molecular virologists that have been working on hepatitis C for 25 plus years wondering what, what they should do next. 